So I'm going to talk about this and the way I create my portraits. So first of all, they had us choose three people that we might be interested in, in doing, and we had to apply. So they chose, and so my top three, I actually was hoping to get, because Michelle Obama was one, and I thought, oh, that'd be really cool if I got to do Michelle Obama. And um, this person, and there was another woman, and I can't remember her name, but uh, those were my top three. But I learned that George Washington Carver was the best person to get because when they talked about the show, it was the top person that they talked about because he was, he's like the father of the horticulture thing. So um, that, was, that worked out really well for me. Now I am going to show you some of the things that I did. When I work, I, t I first did a lot of um, research. Well, first, I cho the, chose people that there were a lot of reference photos. There were some people that there was like, there was one woman, there was one picture of her all over the web, just one. And so as an artist, I wanted to be able to explore the, you know, the person I'm working on and be able to decide which one I want to use. The only unfortunate thing about George Washington Carver was almost every picture was in black and white. So I had to interpret it. I mean, I guess I could have done the portrait in black and white, but I really, I wanted it. I wanted it, he was a very amazing person, and I wanted it to have this presidential, royal type look in my painting. And so I wanted it to be color. So these are some of the pictures. This is the picture that I liked the best. It was the one that I used as a reference for his face. This picture right here is not one that I would have chosen, but it shows it has wallpaper in there, and I kind of like the idea of having some kind of wallpaper in the background. These, there were so many pictures of him. He really liked um, Queen Anne's lace. And so Queen Anne's lace is a weed, or, but, but he liked to use weeds in his cooking. And the, um, Queen Anne's lace is actually a family of the carrots. And so that's why I included Queen Anne's lace in the painting because they show several pictures of him holding it because he really liked Queen Anne's lace. And then he always wore this apron. It was a, like he dressed up in a suit all the time and he wore this white apron. So I wanted to have that. He also always had a boutonniere. So he had this very business-like looking look. These are some other portraits that I saw that people did, and it was interesting because his skin color is all over the place. This picture, he looks like really, really dark black. This one, he looks almost white, and this one, he's kind of in between. And I think this person used the same reference photo that I might, or you know, similar photo or same time in his life. So it was interesting for me to see how other people treated. A lot of people in this show simply copied a photo. I did not do this. I made my own composition. I wanted my picture to be unique. The, the original painting that I've done of this is 36 inches by 36 inches, so it's like life size. Now here's some other things. He, he also was a painter. He was, you know, he really was into the arts as well as doing, being a scientist. And so this is an actual picture of his palette. And I decided I wanted to incorporate it in my painting because it was so important to him. So this is one of these clues. And the other thing was that he actually made his own paints. He made them from berries and flowers. How cool is that? I don't know. I haven't seen it. Would have been nice. Every, most, almost everything was black and white, so I couldn't really tell, but it would be interesting to see one of his real paintings. So here I use Photoshop a lot. And so what I did was taking the face, and then I took his suit from another picture, and I threw in the, the um, apron, and I put in some hands. They're not his hands, but I wanted to have a, you know, a, a collage of what it was I was going to work on before I started it. Then I had my 36 by 36 canvas right here, and I just sketched, lightly sketched in what I was going to do. Then I started, this was in the morning, and this was in the afternoon, I started to just put in the tonal values. 
And like I said, this came in together so fast because this was, normally it would take me a long time, but it was like, I knew him so well that I got this in, got this far, and then this was the next day I put in the other details and decided, I decided I didn't want to get, I only had, I had less than a month to finish this painting. And I was going to do it in oils, but I thought, you know, this has got to be dry. I need, to, I'm not going to do this in oil. So I did it in acrylic. So I decided I wanted to do wallpaper to show the, um, the fact that he was doing this uh, crop rotation and all this, uh, he, peanuts, <coughs> soybean, and sweet potatoes were the, uh, um, I can't think of the word right now, but they rotated the crops from the cotton. So that's why I decided to include them. And this wallpaper was such a, a lot of work. What happened is I um, originally had two of the, I had this one and another peanut here, and I was ready to, st I had already sketched it, was ready to paint it. And a woman from across the way that's teaching a, a yarn class, she said, that looks like he's got things sticking out of his head. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh no. So then I spent a whole day reworking the wallpaper in Photoshop to get it the way I wanted it. And But I was glad I hadn't started painting it at that point because, you know, sometimes you're working so closely with something you can't see it. And I'm like, oh wow, I'm glad she noticed that. So here are some of the other things. I found pictures of these plants, but I, I changed them. Like this didn't have the flowers in there, and I put flowers in there, and um, I this did not have the soybeans on there, it was a soybean plant, so I worked it in Photoshop and had it. So these are things that I worked on. This right here was for the boutonniere, and this is what I decided to use for the table right over here. And so this is showing starting, I, as I said, I was working all over the place. I was working on the wallpaper, but I didn't want to get hung up on just one thing. It's very easy to do that when you're painting. It's just, just focus on one thing and you have this all finished and the rest of it's like, oh, it's nothing there. So here is um, my painting and that was the photo reference that I was using. And here I am working in my studio. I sent this to Bruce. He was on a traveling trip, and I said, hey, it's George and me. Say <laughs> hi. And here I am again working. I have, um, initially when I did the palette, I put more tone on the colors in here. And actually Trina, who just came, I think I just saw her somewhere. Okay, she's the one that said, you know, maybe that's, maybe you should change that a little bit. So I, I did, in the final one, I actually subdued it to look more like the, oh, the original painting that I showed, the picture that I showed you. So, anyway, I finished up the table. The chair was quite a bit of work. You see the chair is finished over here. And that's it. Do you have any questions about anything? Yes. Who is she? She looks like an actress. It's my mother. This really? was my mother. I did this. In fact, this has been in the Fitchburg Museum of Art and the Whistler uh, Museum of Art, Whistler House Museum of Art. And actually, I won an honorable mention award for this painting. So this is uh, my mom when she was probably about 18 or 19. There's an actress that looks like your mom when she was 19. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Well, my mom um, had a very tough life, and she was, she was very beautiful. And I have a lot of pictures of her smiling, but I decided that I had this old picture of her that was a sepia tone, and I really loved it, and I decided, I was actually on a trip, and I was sketching it, and I had it in my mind what I wanted, and I, and I said, you know, she had a tough, she was this beautiful, tough woman, and I wanted to do a painting that showed her being strong, not weak, I wanted her to be a strong person, and the, the sky is turbulent, you know, it's a storm, and so I call the painting Stormy Weather, because I wanted to portray how I see my mother. And the thing that's interesting is my sister, actually put a pin just like this on my, in, on my mother when she was in the coffin. I didn't know that, and I made this flower, and it's just, and I just recently bought a flower. I wore it to the uh, event at the Botanical Gardens uh, over the weekend. 
but um, she really loved red roses and she loved cardinals. In fact, my sister wants me to do a painting of a cardinal to represent my mom. And well, that's the story about it. And I'm, I'm, I'm like really, I, I hadn't seen it while it was hanging up. It was like three months in the Whistler house. And when I picked it up, it was like, oh my God, I forgot. You know, it was like, oh, I love this painting. I really, you know, it means a lot to me.